This is the 303rd episode of Crowd Focus Weekly for the third week of April 2019. This episode is titled Many Map Mergers. Cloud Focus Weekly is brought to you by Arcus, and we are hiring. If you're a Salesforce consultant or admin and want to be part of a unique and growing company, send your resume to careers at arcusinc.com. I'm your host, Jason Atwood, and joining me, co-host with the most, straight out of two days of seminars, Justin Edelstein. <laughs> Let's check the Justin meter on that puppy. Uh, say something else. Straight out of Compton? Hmm? That would not be true. Uh, nope, it would not. Uh, you're straight out of the Marriott Marquis. <laughs> 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 Sitting in a, in a seminar all day. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Uh, how are you? Oh, I'm great. Thanks. How are you? <laughs> uh, I am great. I am oh, great. So good. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, we got a small oh. agenda for today. Small ish. Um, because Salesforce has been a, been a purchasing. Oh, have they? Yeah. So we're going to go over the two things they purchased. We're going to over one quickly because it's like beep boop. And then maybe we'll go with the other one because it's actually quite a big deal, uh, and I'm I, and I'm not sure how I feel about it. So maybe we'll maybe we'll today in today's session of I'm not sure how I feel Justin about it and Jason therapy session. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about it either. Um, well, you know what? The best way to feel about something is to do it on air on a podcast and put it <laughs> out for millions of people to listen to. <laughs> All right. So uh, first thing is Salesforce bought was Map Anything. So they, funny enough, they, we should have named Arcus, Arcus Anything, and we I think really we, would, we would have been bought already because uh, they bought Calendar Anything. True statement. Right? Uh, years ago, made by, oh, what's the name of that? Silverline. And then now they bought Map Anything. Well, back in the day, there was this product called Gant Anything. <laughs> yes, I saw that at Dreamforce. Do you remember that at Dreamforce 10 12? or 11? Gant anything. Gant, or was it Gant everything? I, I don't know. I probably have a picture somewhere. I feel See, like if we were Gant good, everything. If we were good podcasters, no, we are good podcasters. I'm going to make it because I don't do this. So someone else will have to do the work. We will post a picture of that into the into the iOS and Android apps as special content. Of, special content for this episode. Yes. Take note. Special content. Special content. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. How about that? I'll put a picture Ooh, where you can reference. That is a brutal picture. Gant anything oh. or everything. Actually, I think I look all right now. Uh, you look fine. We're all, all right. in our matching chinos. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> Walking the sidelines of the uh, of the of the field. All right. <laughs> Arcus official gear. The Arcus official. Khakis and a tucked in. Oh, look, you're still wearing I'm it. I'm still wearing, you're wearing it. that shirt. Yes, I've gone through many of that them. That shirt stands on its own. It. No, no, no. I. This is the. This is the. This is the 2017 <laughs> version. Circa 2017. This is 2017. Those were cotton. These are whatever this that whatever that fabric is. Um, all right. So map anything. Interesting. I think it's you know. Geolocation has always been something that Salesforce, I feel like, adopted, wow, years and years ago because they, they, they actually built it into Salesforce that geocodes would, would be popped into um, to the addresses and you could and it would run and it would actually you know, take your addresses and find the geocodes for them. And then you could do some fun things on top of that, but you could never do it natively because there was nothing, you couldn't do anything with it in the native tool because... There was, not, there was no way to actually do anything with those geocodes. Interesting enough, they now can do something with it. This does feel like another one of these vendors. What's the other vendor that... Um, the other map anything? Yeah. It's called GeoPoint. Yeah, GeoPoint. If I were GeoPoint, I'd be like, oh, here you go again. You no? know what? I'd be like, all right, they got like the big payday, yeah. but... We get to still do what we want over here, and they get to now get sucked up and spit out. Well, they also know that this will take probably a long period of time before it turns into... I mean, it took years for calendar or anything to show up in Lightning, right. which is where it eventually showed up is in the calendar in Lightning, but it took two... This will have an impact on field service Lightning. Absolutely. Sure, right? yep. Routing. Routing, all that stuff. 
people out in the fields and then it'll i'm sure be hoping that there's that this is some some sort of freemium situation where there's some level of mapping that they provide outside of just like yeah there's an address and there's a little image of a google map that's what you which get today. that exists that's that's for today, free right yeah. so i would hope that you'd be able to maybe like i don't know plot a bunch of accounts on a map or something right basic stuff and if you want to do more advanced stuff like routing or um you know draw your own circles to to create your own territories if you will that's a little bit more on the advanced list side. view maps would be nice take a list view and hit a map view over right. that list view that'd be cool again things that we have no idea if they're gonna give away charge for my guess is they're gonna charge for lots of this stuff yeah that's a good prediction all right well that's that was fun i mean it'd be fun interesting to see it come in to salesforce and where it comes in i predict at least a couple years to see that but the other bigger much more controversial and maybe sad maybe happy news uh is salesforce buys salesforce.org yeah um and so for 300 million dollars and this is this is strange this is very strange because and, and i read over the articles and some are very negative and i've talked to some people about it we've internally talked about it as like what does this mean um we obviously just full disclosure are you know we do a lot of business on both sides of the dot com and the dot org uh and so this means something to us from a business standpoint because we work with both of these teams and have for for years and we've been working with the dot org since they were tiny and now they're huge and now they're getting kind of swept back up into to dot com um the 300 million dollars the money's going towards the foundation which is again it is a confusing landscape that there are three entities not two because you know the salesforce.org and salesforce.com but the foundation is the is the nonprofit center of it is the so there's three so now there's only gonna be two it's gonna be the foundation which is gonna handle all of i guess the grant writing and sort of uh money in program management i'm just letting you do this it's so much fun for me okay and <laughs> thanks a lot it's like watching you pretty much do anything else and then uh and then dot org is not going to exist anymore so dot org with all the, the sales people and all the service and the product people is all swept up into salesforce and they'll be part of salesforce um so the foundation has been this way for a little while for yeah, about two to three years it's been its own thing yeah they've been focused on like disaster relief like things of that nature whenever salesforce gets involved with an occurrence somewhere around the globe and they need to rally the you know the proverbial troops and raise some money and match some money and send some people the, that's what the foundation is taking care of it's it's much smaller than it used to be it used to be salesforce.com and the salesforce foundation and the Salesforce Foundation were the ones that were Salesforce.org before it existed. They sort of split out the business side and made it a social enterprise, the .org. And then the foundation just did really foundational stuff. And now it's like, okay, well, this <laughs> business and this business, they look alike. And they right. kind of do very much the same things. Uh, so let's make them into one business, I guess. I don't know. That's all we know, right? One, one dot com buys dot org and that's now they're going to be one and who knows what's going to happen with the teams and who knows if they'll actually, you know, start learning from each other and collaborating with each other from a product perspective. Right. I mean, think about it. Like you've got this nonprofit cloud, you've got this education cloud. They are called clouds. That means something. And well, it does. I know you make a little shruggy face, but it's I mean, true. It's true because it's just a marketing term, but okay. Yeah. But you know, financial services cloud is actually a real cloud, a real product and is actually in the release notes, the Salesforce release notes, same right. for health cloud. 
marketing cloud. These are like real entities. The nonprofit cloud it always felt like, well, oh, that's a .org thing. Oh, that's just NPSP over there. And they actually have some really great tech, really interesting things that they do and are on completely different release cycles and have their own version of the same thing that other products have their own versions of. Um, there's no standard model for B2C, for example, right? Yep. Financial services cloud uses person accounts. Nonprofit cloud uses its own householding model. So this action plans, the three different versions plans, of the action right? plans. There's all these versions, right? There's engagement plans, action plans are actually the same thing. They're probably built on the same initial code base and then modified. So it would be great to see these teams start to work with each other but also not slow each other down. Like, you know, leverage shared services. That's the whole point of Salesforce, right? We all share these core services. Well, start doing that internally. That'd be cool. Um, maybe support will get a little better. <laughs> I don't know. Um, you know, I'm, I'm hoping for the best here. Um, we do work with a lot of nonprofits a lot of .org customers that are going to need, in my opinion, some hand-holding through this transition period unless it is seamless to the What do you think it customer. would mean to them? So from a, from a, from a, at the nonprofit side, if you are a nonprofit working with Salesforce, I think one of the fears is they're going to raise prices, right? There's always been a very deep... So there's that's, been the, that's not really a fact, right? That's right. just a story so, that you tell yourself. That's what I'm saying. That's one of the fears. That's, right. that's why I said it's fear. Not, right, not necessarily based. I on don't reality, I, and being around this for way, way, way too long, I don't think they would do that. I they just I, raise their prices. I, I see this as I see this as that someone in Salesforce, the Salesforce, the big Salesforce, the dot com, looked at the growth of dot org, which was growing faster in a ratio than dot com, and saw that as like, wow, this thing's getting very big. And also then said, wow, we have a lot of stuff that's really they're doing the same thing. Like we have two people doing really the same thing and we could both grow faster together, but also share share resources internally. We're kind of they I mean they, they live in the same place, right? They're in the same buildings. Mm -hmm. So that's strange. Yeah. So it's like there's a lot of things about it that was always weird. They were in the same buildings and they're they're literally down the hall from each other. But they're in these different organizations, and they have different. Remember, one's also a .org, and one's a .com. So the compensation and the way, that, even the way that you pay, I'm not going to get into it. I know, but I'm not going to talk about it. But even the way that you get paid, one versus the other, is different. Right. It was actually advantageous to be on one side versus the other. Right. Um, which made for you know complications. Let's call yeah. it. And... Well, those complications have to be worked out. I'm hoping from the outside, from the inside. I hope they, you know, they get to enjoy all the sort of, you know, cross contamination. It is like a, a company buying another company, except for one of those companies couldn't exist without the other. Like it was a little, it was a shadow company, right? Dot org relied on Salesforce for a lot. And when we used to talk to the dot org people, it, there was, there was some things. It's like, well, we can't do this because we're connected. We, yeah. we were either not connected enough or we're, too connected so it, it kind of made it, it does kind of make sense to get the um the scale right as they grow i'm sure from all these different pieces again big business things then there's the like dot work has been changing over the years anyway like it stopped being this i mean years and years and years ago uh and you know more than i do about it but it's kind of become more dot com in the last two years anyway. And we have people who work at Arcus who worked there and definitely will tell those stories. And we know people who have gone elsewhere. And so in some ways, it's kind of going back to it's almost what dot org has become was dot, was a mini dot com. So being swept up into dot com is kind of the, you know, the next evolution. I just hope from the external side yeah. for the nonprofits, it doesn't matter at all. There'll like, probably they don't, be some that there'll be little to zero impact whatsoever. Uh, I feel like there might be the others, probably on the larger scale, like in the field or enterprise level of customer, as Salesforce calls their, we call them clients, yep. customers of Salesforce, 
where they will probably have to go through some legal stuff, like re-signing of paperwork to a different entity. Yeah. We've worked at big companies. That was always a thing. Yeah. Right? Let's re-sign. Oh, we got to get this re-sign. Oh, my goodness. It'll take like six months to get like a contract that you've already signed, re-signed. Um, who knows how that'll play out and what that will do. Um, and Salesforce says, we, you know, we talked about like they keep acquiring other companies too. And how does that fit in? Because every time they acquire something, it's like, okay, we've acquired it. We're going to figure out the market for it. We're going to start selling it. And then they have to figure out how to sell it at .org because it's a different SKU. It's a different price point for pretty much everything. And you know, now here they go. They just bought Map Anything. Like, at what point do nonprofits get to enjoy Map Anything from Salesforce at a discounted rate? If you were going on the positive side, you would say that this would, by having it, it part of speed it, it up, should right? speed it up. Because it was always like, oh, we don't have the SKU, or we don't have it in our price book, or whatever it is, right? Now you would think that they would all be in the same org. Right. Hey, you're one big company. You should all be in the same Salesforce, right? You know this is going to take at least three to four years. I mean, I don't, even, I, I don't even know like if they're in the same org or not, but I would have to assume that they're not currently, and I would hope that they end up being in the same org. Yeah. I have no idea. Anyway, uh, yeah, I just I don't... I can't find anything that like really upsets me about it, except for just the feeling of it feeling upsetting. There's a little like there's a little culture thing that I feel personally, having been a customer of the Salesforce Foundation back when it was ten to fifteen employees, and having watched it grow from ten to fifteen employees and knowing pretty much everybody who worked there to being a thousand employees. Yep. and not knowing everybody who works there, but still knowing a lot of the people who work there. And that culture still does exist at .org of like, there's still a, a, a lot of emphasis on impact and a lot of emphasis put on helping and the effort that they put in to help people's missions as mm-hmm. opposed to driving bottom line right and that's where this culture thing is going to be very interesting yeah when these companies actually become a company because they really were different they really were separate they were really but my different my argument is they've been coming closer and closer over the last three or four years i would i would agree in part like from a it's been much more about the money on the dot org side sales like hey sales account executives like really being driven by quota and hitting numbers yes that's definitely come and that's why the business has thrived in a certain respect right you can't just sit there and be like eh, we're just helping the world and you know let's just try and sell like any, you know our biggest baddest thing which isn't even that great to a competitor right a black bod shop or something like that but they've really invested over the last number of years in things like the nonprofit success pack and the nonprofit cloud, yep. education cloud, with real infrastructure, real products, real ability to go to market with these impressive pieces of technology that also have some real deep meaning behind them, as opposed to, I'm going to make your salesperson more efficient, right. or I'm going to make your call center work better right it's a different story to tell it is and i think there are people who probably work at that organization who don't feel good about this they're like i started at a company that was meant to do one thing and now i'm at a company that again very highly connected that other company so it's not like you didn't know that you were part of salesforce they were the best salesforce isb that's what i've i've said it for a long time when people ask me about dot org i say salesforce.org is the best salesforce isb they're the best ISV out there. They have the best product that's built on the platform. They know how to maintain it. They have a continuous integration. Every two weeks, you're getting upgrades. Yep. They figured out this platform, and they know how to sell on it. Like, They're a really good ISV. They have the advantage of being really tightly connected, meaning part of the company. <laughs> <laughs> but now they're really part of the company. So 
are they an ISV anymore? Are they like financial services cloud? And that's it. You just get the resources you get. And that's that. I mean, I could see them peeling back some of those resources and saying, whoa, the product team for nonprofit cloud and the product team for financial services cloud or well, licenses of financial services cloud costs like, I don't know, 10 times the amount of, oh, and I'm making that up. I don't think it does but like 10 times the amount of a license for nonprofit cloud, why do we have so many resources working on this nonprofit cloud? They're going to start to have to answer those very hard questions. Yeah. And impact and outcomes and doing good in the world, hopefully will be an okay answer for why those resources are necessary. Otherwise they're going to get stripped down to the studs and there'll be a big sales team and there'll be a, good product not a great one and that'll, that'll, that'll be, interesting. be the way it goes it'll be interesting to see how they even how they do the the sales structure you know there's anyway so many things that that could happen we'll learn more about it as it does uh as it goes i am again a part of me believes that the core of salesforce the dot com core is strong enough and there is still a vision of of you know business helping the world which is one of mark's benioff's big thing is that he will keep to that core um regardless of where the organization sits or what their name is or whatever um so anyway but uh it's it's definitely a touchy topic and and i've it'll be it'll actually be interesting to be at tdx and to be gathering some opinions and and hearing about that um Okay, so, uh, all right. Well, we also, by the way, Summer 19 the release notes are out. They are out. So we will start blogging about those um, in the next... Will we? Know, yeah, we should. Are you sure? Well, I'll just... Someone will start blogging about I them. I guess, maybe. Someone will. Maybe you'll write one. Maybe. No, I think it's on schedule. Um, <laughs> you're giving me the no face. You checked. I will rectify that. <laughs> I will say right now there should be some summer nineteen blog post coming out. <laughs> that will be happening. Uh, and then it happens. And then it'll happen. <laughs> See how those things happen? Then you just, just say it just and say then it. it happens. It's like the image showing it's like up that in, image. The, in the special it's section. Just funny, it's like I'm talking to somebody who's <laughs> maybe gonna be listening. Maybe or and not. It's gonna happen. Ooh, they're gonna maybe be listening. They'll just download. Maybe well, that's so fine. Just don't listen. All right. So uh, we'll start covering that as well. Let's uh, so a quick one today on our. We've someone pointed out to me today that we did one on uh, like February twenty second, March twenty second, and so the person's like, "Hey, are you gonna do like April twenty second? I said, "No, April twenty fourth. We'll, we'll skip a couple days." Oh, well, we did January twenty second and March twenty second. I think no, I think we uh, February and March. Well, we definitely say. did January. I don't know. I think we that skipped. was three hundred. No, that three hundred. December. Three hundred was in December. Ah, oh, then yeah. we definitely took January off. Yeah, definitely took. January. So we did February twenty second and March twenty second. I think something like that. Oh, well, we should have done this some Monday. Yeah. Well, no, I was traveling. Well, that's your fault. Yeah. All right. So let's go. Let's make some picks. <laughs> Cloud focus whenever picks. Yeah. I'm gonna do another anti pick. <gasps> oh, you're so grumpy. Wait, check the meter. Meter's all good. Um, oh, it's all good. It's is all it, good. Is it good? Good. It's good. Good. You know, I'm in this anti-pick mode while I'm here. <laughs> Do you know how hard it is to get a known issue created from Salesforce support? Oh, it's bad. You just can't do it. So you're basically still talking about the pick you made last time. I didn't pick the, Salesforce support. No, last you picked time. the Gmail anti-pick Gmail oh, sync last oh, time. Oh, whatever that thing happened, that just solved itself, I guess, magically. <laughs> sure, it did. Um, yeah, you know, I had this issue. Yeah, just bring this out. Was it known? Now it's going to be yeah. for the twelve people who listen to this and the couple others that download. Um, so I deployed a process um, the other day. Very good. And in it, it had a chatter post as part of it. Mm-hmm. And it was to at mention a chatter group. Okay. Okay. You can't really deploy these things because chatter groups, you can't really deploy a chatter group, right? right? So I deploy the thing 
ha and it's referencing this chatter group. But I created the chatter group in production environment with the same exact name so that it would deploy. And it did deploy, and it was fine. Okay. I even went back into it, and I edited it before I activated it and retyped in the name of the group like because it was just at mentioning a group right so i was like at name of group right so that it made sure it was the right one saved it activated it every time the process fired got this like exception that the group didn't exist i'm like that doesn't make any sense like i typed it in and the group's right there right and when i submitted it to support they told me that i should rebuild the entire process and in production? I, yeah. And if I rebuild the entire process, not a new version, but a brand new process. Oh, that's fun. That it'll work. And I'm like, okay, but bug here. Like, right. I didn't, like, I'm typing in. I'm at mentioning that group right there with this ID, right. this group, that ID. And it's referencing some other ID. I don't know where it's coming from. It must be stuck in that deploy. And that's why they said to recreate one. And then they said, you shouldn't do what you did. You shouldn't deploy the thing. And I was like, oh, so I should just build stuff in production, I guess. I, I and actually they feel... Would not, I feel... they would not create a known issue for me on this. Oh. Did you take to Twitter? Nah. You know, I guess it's not that big of a problem. I don't know. It's a bug. It is a bug. Which is a known issue. Well, apparently, I was the first person to find it. So That's until, right. Until more people find it, it's not a known issue by, by their standards. No, you have to have one person find it, and then no, other people. Apparently not. Apparently, like for it to be known, more than one person has to know about it. Well, I know about it. Well, now that's two. Can you can you submit a case about this exact problem? Yes. <laughs> just, just recreate it. Just somewhere? copy. Just copy the text you did. I'll post it in. That'll be two people. I was befuddled by the whole situation, <laughs> and then like to just rebuild it in production. Just rebuild it. By the like, way, we what? have enough people at Arcus that we could have everybody put in cases at the same time. I don't want to bother everybody. Co coordinate the clicks. I like don't everybody. want to bother. Click. It's just so annoying to deal with support that I just can't even. Um, anyway, that was a little rant. Um, hopefully support will get better when these two companies become one and they'll like, you know, double down on it and not just pull away from it. <laughs> I know we're laughing. <laughs> it's so bad. It's going to be the support. It's so going to be bad. the first thing to go for a, a company that sells the best customer support, whatever they want to customer service cloud thing ever on the it's planet. Just, it's just, I mean, again, personal opinion here. <laughs> oh man. Look what I did. <laughs> it's just, they don't, it's, it's, it's a people problem. This is not a, this is not their support process of tickets and cases and blah, 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 or whatever. And, and auto responses. It's all fine. It's just a people problem because First of all, they they deflect way too much. Their their deflection shields are on ten. They will deflect anything and give you just canned responses. And I get it; they're getting tons and tons of crap. But there's got to be a better way, maybe some sort of artificial intelligence that can figure out whether this is something that needs to be deflected because it's some stupid person asking some stupid question that they could easily Google four seconds and find, and whether it needs. It needs to actually be looked at and not deflected. Yeah. And how they, about also like you, you're paying for it. Like if you're paying for the support as opposed to their free support, oh, there should be a different free level of sophistication. Free support for a subscription answer. model. For subscription. I mean, I'm paying for licenses, so I hate when they say yeah, free support. Whatever. Baked in as opposed yeah. to premiere. Okay. Whatever. But at the same time, I, I think their KPIs are just wrong. Like, as a consultant yeah. who has a service cloud consulting certification, Ditto. I'd walk right in there and I'd be like, show me your dashboards. What are you measuring? Because whatever it is, it's wrong. It's closed. It's wrong. Whatever you're measuring is wrong because the whole process is really screwed up. The, the, def the, the deflection is very bad. And then some of the policies they have that's just like that they want to get back to you within certain periods of time, even if it's just to say nothing. Again, it, KPIs are yeah, off. They're measuring this stupid thing. And then what's the other thing I would say? And then it's the people. They're, and Because again, if you find a very good support person, here's what good support people do. And I know this is, this is cost money, but sorry kids. Like they look at the ticket, they think about it. What? 
they then research it. Huh? And then they get in to help it. But then they ask if you granted log right. permission. See, but a good, but a good first. But right? a good they ask that first. But a, or do they look? A good support person <laughs> looks at the ticket, <laughs> reads it thoroughly, sees that they've granted, then goes in. You're crazy, man. Logs into the org, <laughs> tries the thing, sees that it do- it doesn't work, and then goes to working on it. And the problem is they're so into deflection that they don't, they just immediately deflect. I'm like, well, I can't log in. You didn't grab me. Yes, I did. It's in the ticket. And they just do it over and over and over again. And that's the problem. And I'll tell you, because I am support. Like, you're support too. We we support our clients and have things that people come to us and they say the difference is when I send you something, you actually look into it. I say, yeah. Well, A, you're paying me to do it. But B, I'm going to be thorough because that's my job is to be thorough. I'm not just to go, did you hit the X button? No. If you send me something, I'm going to look at it. I'm going to log into your org. I'm going to see what I can see. I'm going to try to replicate what you just saw. Right? I'm going to be thorough. And that's what, that's the difference. That's all that needs to happen. They just need to be thorough. All right. So here's my pick. All right. Here's your pick. That was, this came out of uh, poor support experience. But thorough is expensive. Very expensive. Oh, but know. Premier Support should be well, yeah, that's, thorough. Yeah, you're paying for it. They should be thorough. They shouldn't do all this deflection stuff. They should be thorough. They should be able to open up a ticket. Sorry, open up a case, read it, go through the steps, try it. They should do all that before they get back to you with the deflection. Right. All right. Moving on. All right. So RCN to go. <laughs> My pick. You you have it, no? I have it. I, I haven't used it in a long uh, time. All right. So we both live in the same uh, building. We share the same infrastructure in our building. You have RCN. I have RCN. I do. Now, RCN to go is free with a subscription to RCN and a Tebow box that they, you know. Is this sell. RCN to go to hell? <laughs> they can. So it does one thing really well, which on my phone, like right now, I could pull up and hit record on something tonight at like 8 o'clock if I wanted to. Now, you use RCN to go to that or you use yeah, Tebow to no, do that? No, RCN to go. That's weird. Which okay. basically logs you into TiVo. It's the same difference. Okay. Um, and yeah, I can go and like set a recording. Like, oh, I really want to watch that. Oh my goodness, it's on tonight. Oh, I'm going to be out tonight. Let me set that right now. Right. You know, easy yes. peasy done. But you're supposed to, while you're on your network, you're supposed to be able to actually watch things on RCN to go. And also download things that are on your TiVo onto your device to bring with you, like on an airplane. So I go to try and do this before I last traveled, whenever that was, a couple weeks ago. True enough. And I could not get it to do the download thing. Hmm. Then I couldn't get it to even just let me watch something. So I look into it, and I call them up, and they say, well, you're not on the same network as your TiVo. And I don't understand how that's possible, because my internet is from RCN. Right. And my cable is from RCN. Okay. And I only have one network. And they can't really answer these questions for me (laughs) as to how the TiVo is on a different network than my iPad. (laughs) And then I'm like, so how can I check which network the TiVo's on? You can't. <laughs> what? You can't. You can't. You can't. Oh. It, you can't. So they're going to have to send a technician. Oh. Which I'm like, I don't want a technician. No. I, this should be so easily solved. No. I need to bad. like schedule a four hour window for someone to come over to like. I don't know. Look at a box. Yeah, that's what you need to do. It's <laughs> terrible. That's terrible. Okay, I, your your pick is terrible. Well, it's a good pick, but it's a bad pick. So, <laughs> it's I'm gonna a good, pick bad pick. I don't pick podcasts very often because I don't. Do you pick releases? Uh, I sometimes pick you releases. Do pick releases. Oh, it's been a while. Um, but I have found actually off one that I think you and Amy listen to which was the BBC World Service 50 Things That Made the Modern Economy. Yeah. Which stopped because it got to 50, 50. But then they started up again. Oh, they did? Yes. And they started up again. So that first of all, that's a great 
that's a great series and you don't have to listen to them in, in whatever the only thing is they're about nine minutes yeah, so they're, they're short they're commuter they're they're commuter length you listen to like three of them in a commute very good really just fun whatever so when they started up which i've been hearing this has been podcast i mean we should do this in our podcast where one podcast will promote another podcast mm. so like freakonomics mm-hmm. used to do it with the with another one like they'll kind of tell you about another one but so anyway, so 50 Things That Made the Modern Economy, which is from the BBC World Service, for the first three episodes as they were getting ready to launch their new, the new season, I guess, although they're going beyond 50, so they got to rename that, they started playing another, another podcast as like a preview. And it was 30 Animals That Made Us Smarter, which is basically the same thing, just about animals. And I like it's it. great. I like it. I like it's it. great. I will say it is just... It's fun, but it's all about how animals we take in things from and use animals and um, as you know, either whether the technology, whatever. It is it is a great series. So that's a double pick for you. This, this the thirty animals that made us smarter, and the fifty things that made the modern economy. They're both from BBC. They're free. They they download, listen. They come out every couple weeks. Um, really bite sized little things, but just really. I mean, podcasts are amazing. <laughs> this one excluded, of course, but they—it's uh, just—it's like great information and stuff like that you can just listen to and just go, "Wow, that's—I I learned something." Okay, that's it. That's—I've also learned that uh, that you don't like RCN to go. All right, so next time we'll probably we'll probably jump into summer nineteen. Uh, you can follow Justin and all of his rants against uh, RCN at Just Elstein. You can follow me at Jason M. Atwood. The company's at Arcus Inc. We're in the success community and the Power of Us group hubs, although I think we've been migrated to a topic or something now that's been in the Power of Us group. What is this? We're, on, we're in the LinkedIn on the Google+. Plus. Of course, you want to review us. We love that. Subscribe and review in iTunes, Stitcher, Google, TuneIn. We're in, I think we're even looking at putting ourselves in SoundCloud. It's so much fun. Wow. Uh, and Spotify. Um, Why? Until that happens, it's uh, Justin and Jason saying enjoy those cloudy days. Mm-hmm.